and uh, let's get started. We start by sharing the screen and then we start talking. Here we are. And I also need some slides. Okay, I'm not gonna spend time introducing myself, just a couple of words. Uh, Ciao, friends. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Alberto Ferrari. I work with Marcus at SQLBI.com. We do a lot of stuff that is related to DAXA. So we write books, we do training, we do consulting, and that's our main job. With that said, I'm not here to um, sell myself. The goal of today is uh, to talk and understand, most importantly, what are the new composite models. So when you work with uh, Power BI and you create a Power BI data model, you can you need to store some data. So you have some data that needs to be queried. And the data can be stored uh, in uh, Vertipack. If you are using the Vertipack mode, uh, that is the default mode, the import mode, uh, data is loaded inside the Vertipack store. Uh, and the Vertipack engine is uh, the engine that actually executes all the queries. You use DAX to run queries and everybody's happy. The drawback of uh, using Vertipack is latency. Data is not real time because it needs to be processed. It needs to be moved from where it is, wherever it is, uh, inside the Vertipack database. On the other hand, it has uh, a tremendous speed uh, and all the power of uh, DAX is available. Then you can use direct query for, uh, for relational data sources, uh, that is uh, direct query over SQL. In that case, data is in SQL and you send, every time you want to get some data, you run a SQL query. The advantage is that there is no latency, the data is live. Uh, the disadvantage is speed. Direct query is uh, not the fastest engine on the planet. And then there's also another way of uh, uh, using direct query with uh, an engine that was called at the beginning direct query for analysis services. It actually had a much longer name, uh, but at the end, before just before going GA, they decided to go for the uh, community name, we decided to call these models composite models, and this is the name it has now. With a composite model, you connect to an analysis services database, so an analysis services model that it can have direct query or uh, Vertipack or any other engine, and you link to it. The data is not in your local model, the data is still in the remote mode, and you can connect to it. Mixing the architecture makes everything a bit more intricate. Now, in order to use a composite model, you start with a live connection. Uh, because uh, I'm not going to use these slides, but these are boring. Uh, I prefer to show everything with a demo. So let's start Power BI, just a new Power BI desktop file that contains uh, basically nothing, just uh, an empty file. And the model right now, it contains nothing. I can get data from uh, many data sources, uh, but what I'm going to do is connect with a Power BI model that is already on the cloud. So we have a Power BI model, that model is in the cloud, and I can just uh, click on it, connect it. That's just Contoso published uh, on the Power BI service. What happens right now is that I'm creating a live connection. A live connection, it means that my local Power BI desktop file is connected with uh, the remote engine. And I can, uh, uh, can you, anybody confirm that the Zoom is working? So if I highlight things. Uh, the, it is working, yep. You're good. Perfect. So you see that I have uh, all the tables, uh, all the measures and everything is uh, there. And if I click on the uh, diagram view, I can see product store sales, uh, my usual Contoso model. The connection is live, meaning that no data is uh, transferred. All the data is currently uh, in the service, uh, but I can build my report. So I can just go here and let's say that I grab from the product, I place the brand and then from sales, uh, I compute the sales amount, maybe use a larger font. Let's go for 17, so it's a bit larger. It's working. Everybody's happy. But the important thing to understand is uh, where is the data and where is the query running? Whenever I execute a query, whenever I change uh, this query, adding, for example, the margin percentage, uh, what happens is that the local model, so the engine, uh, the Power BI file that I have open right now is connected to a remote server. 
the query is sent to the server, the server executes the code, sends back the result set, and the only thing that my Power BI local instance is actually doing is showing the data, so producing the visual that I'm looking at. Because I have no data here, I have, the, I have some features available, not all of them. So I can right click on sales, create a new measure, and this is going to work nicely. I can write whatever code I want here, like uh, let's say that I want the, uh, well, whatever, any measure, that's not so important. I can create a measure, a local measure, and I have local measures and remote measures. But if I want to extend the model, so for example, I want to add a new column to the model, I can't. And the reason I cannot is because there would be no place to store the data. If I go on sales and right click on it, you see that, uh, I can create a new measure, a new quick measure, which I hope nobody uses, uh, and that's it. I don't have the option of creating a new column. Therefore, I have uh, limited features. I cannot change the model. If for whatever reason I want to uh, modify the model, my only option is to rebuild the model from scratch, and once I have the entire model, I can then um, change it and modify it. So. Live connections are nice, they give you some features, you can create measures, but you cannot create calculated columns, you cannot create calculated tables. And that's a strong limitation because you don't have the option of having a remote analysis services model that contains all the corporate data and then extend it with some local tables. That is the reason why Microsoft introduced composite models a lot of time ago. Composite models have been in preview for a very long time, but now they are finally generally available. With a composite model, you have the option of connecting with a remote engine, query the remote engine, but then extend it through your local tables, local columns, local structures. Again, it is important to understand which server is running what. Right now, we are, using a compo we are using a live connection and the local server is doing nothing. The query is completely executed by the remote engine. I can change this model and transform it into a composite model. In order to do that, I need to go here where it tells me what kind of model I'm working with. For whatever reason, the Zoom that box doesn't stop, that says I'm connected live to a Power BI data set. If I click on make changes to the model, I have a warning that says, hey, if you plan to make changes to this model, like renaming columns or changing any of the data of the model, you need to switch to a direct query connection. That is, you need to create a composite model. This requires adding a local model and yada yada, and it's a permanent change. Of course, I'm going to say, of course, I want to do that. And what is happening right now is that uh, the model is being completely changed. Now the engine reads from the remote server the complete set of metadata, and it tells me which table do you want to load. You can choose to load the entire data model, or you can choose to load just a subset of the tables. Of course, I'm interested right now in loading everything. And uh, the engine is sending requests to the remote server, gathering all the metadata of the remote server, and it changed the structure. If we go to the diagram view, you now see that all the tables turn blue, and I have this Power BI double backslash API Power BI dot com that tells me where is this table stored. And the tables are blue because uh, uh, they are table which are not stored locally, they are stored in the remote server. And if I, uh, I don't have data view, so you see that uh, here, I'm not able to zoom there. Okay, here I have the diagram view, I have uh, the report view, but I have no data view. I have no option of looking at any of uh, this data. The model became a composite model. From the surface, nothing changes, but actually there is a big difference. Now we have a local analysis services engine, which is running, a remote analysis services that is running, and the two engines can cooperate to solve queries and execute code. 
it is very important that we understand that the level of cooperation between the engines and we understand really, really well where the queries are going to be executed. Because every time I click on something, like uh, I click on uh, sales uh, and I drop the total cost to my report, uh, what is happening is that the query, because it involves all tables that are coming from the, from a remote server, is executed from the remote server. But as soon as I change the model and I start adding columns, uh, tables, and new structures, uh, then things are starting to be uh, quite different because I will be able to um, I will be able to create queries that connect the different engines. So part of the code will be executed locally, part of the code will be executed remotely. Let's make a test, for example. Let's say that on the product table, I want to create a new column. First of all, you see that now I can do that. I have a new measure and I also have new column. That means I can create a new column in my local model. And if I do that, I can create a, a very simple column like uh, the say no the product category. Uh, a very simple column that says uh, if uh, the unit price uh, the unit cost is greater or equal than a hundred, then it's expensive. Otherwise, it's affordable. And what happens is that I now have a new calculated column in the product table. And I can use the column. I can get rid of the brand, take the product category, bring it here, and I can slice by uh, sales amount, margin percentage, and total cost, depending on uh, the value of a column that actually does not exist in the model. Keep in mind, I'm not changing the model. The remote model is as it is. I'm not changing anything there. I'm just creating a new um, a new column that uh, needs to be executed in some way. And the first and probably one of the most important question to ask is, uh, where is this column stored? If you think about calculated columns in uh, Power BI, if you're working with VertiPack, uh, calculated columns are stored in the model. So the value is computed and then stored in uh, the model. That makes them very fast because whenever you query a calculated column, uh, you don't have to compute the value. You just grab it and uh, and use it. On the other hand, calculated column in composite models, uh, well, if they were computed earlier, there would be no place to store because uh, the product table is in the remote server, is not in the local server. So it's already interesting to start investigating a bit uh, in order to understand where is this column computed and uh, where it is stored. In order to do that, we just look at the performance analyzer to grab the query that is executed when this model is, when the matrix is refreshed. We just refresh, copy the query, and then with Duck Studio, we look at the code of the content of the query. I just need to bring Duck Studio in the right monitor. Oh, that was not that hard. As soon as I paste the code that I copied from Power BI, it says, hey, there are multiple queries detected. The reason is uh, there are now two queries. One is the query that Power BI sent to the local analysis services engine. Then the local analysis services engine, in order to produce the result, had to send a query to the remote engine that is still a DAX query. Uh, the remote engine elaborates the query, sends back the result, and then the local engine processes the result and send it back to Power BI. I'm interested in both queries because we start looking at the content. And the code of the query has first the DAX query and then the direct query query. The first one is the query that is executed by uh, the local engine. And you see that we have a summarized column that computes the sales amount, the margin, the total cost, and it's grouping by the product product category column. Now, bear in mind, product category is not a column in the remote model. It's a column in the local model. But from the point of view of the local model, there is a column named product category and it can be queried. In order to answer this query, 
the local engine needs to send another DAX query to the remote engine. And the remote engine has no clue about the very existence of the product category column. So the direct query query that is executed by the remote engine, let me format the code, is a bit different. You see that the direct query query contains as the first statement define column. Define column defines a column that is local to this query. So it will exist only for the existence of this query and then it will disappear. That contains the code that I wrote in my uh, calculated column. And then it can do a summarized column by product. And you see that this is not product category, it's ASDQ underscore product category because that's the name that was assigned to the column defined inside the query. So the calculated columns that you create in your model, in your uh, composite model, they are not actually stored anywhere. And it, every time you create a column, this column is sent as a query column to the remote engine. And then the remote engine executes the query, uh, behaving as if uh, this ASDQ product category column was part of the model, even though we are, the column does not exist in the model. It exists only for the lifetime of the query, and then it's gone. It computes the sales amount, the margin, the total cost, and finally, it computes everything in, um, it computes all the values and produces the result. The result of this query is sent back to the original query, it is then reprocessed and the result is sent back. So you see that the two engines are working together. We have one query that is executed locally, and this query is sent, and this query generates one or more queries which are sent to the remote engine. You can obtain the same information, even though it's a bit harder. No, I destroyed everything. So let me repaste the code. If you just keep the original query and you enable the server timings to see the code that is being executed, and then you run this query, in the server timings, you will see that instead of having XM SQL, we have DAX code. So in order to solve this query, it had to execute this DAX code, that is the DAX code to the remote engine. Now, here comes uh, the first important limitation. Because of the way calculated columns are implemented in uh, direct query in uh, composite models, uh, the code of a calculated column needs to be executed entirely on the remote engine. It cannot be, it cannot uh, use information which are local, because if it used information that are local, then it, the remote engine would not be able to uh, perform any calculation. Let's see that with uh, an example. Let's say that I want to create um, uh, a local table. I can just create, uh, uh, let's do that in DAX Studio, it's probably easier. Let's say that I want to use a summarized columns. Uh, I work by raw data brand. I compute the sales amount, that is just the sales amount, and then the brand category that says if the sales amount is greater or equal than, uh, let's say, 1 million, uh, that's, a, let's say, top seller or non-top seller. I have no idea about the values that we are going to obtain. But we do have some brands which are top sellers and some other brands which are non-top sellers. So I might want to create a calculated table that contains this piece of information and then reference it in the product table, creating a calculated column that tells me if the product belongs or not to a top seller brand. I can just take this code and build a new calculated table in my model. Let's call later brand categories. Again, I'm creating a calculated table in the local model and uh, 
it's interesting to understand where is this calculated table being stored. Calculated tables and calculated columns, they use a different method of different implementation. Calculated tables are computed and then stored in the local Vertipack model. Because the main difference between a composite model and the live connection is that in a composite model, you do have a local Vertipack store where you can store data. And indeed, if you look here, now I have the data view. If you remember, before we had only the uh, report view and the diagram view. Now we have the data view here. And I do have the data view because I have among the many tables, my calculated table that contains the brand, the sales amount and the brand category. What happens if I decide to create a calculated column in the local, uh, in the product table that references the brand category from the brand? I can give it a try. Let's go here. I can go in product, create a new column. Uh, let's call it brand category. And I just use a lookup value. In the brand categories, I want the brand categories, uh, brand category, where the brand categories of brand is the same as the product brand. And then I just hit enter. Unfortunately, I get an error. Now let me zoom in a different way. Look at what the error says. The column product brand category cannot be pushed to the remote data source and cannot be used in this scenario. What's the meaning of that? Because of the way calculated columns are computed, if I want to create a calculated column, that calculated column needs to be pushed to the remote server as part of the query that is executed to populate my visual. And in order for the, for the calculated column to be pushed to the remote server, the calculated column can only reference data that is in the remote server. There are no ways a calculated column can reference data that is on the local server. And here I'm referencing the brand categories table and the brand categories table is in the local server. Therefore, there are no ways that this calculated column can be computed. And that's a first important limitation that you need to take into account. Uh, the way of computing calculated columns this way, or the way of computing where the query is completely sent to the remote server is called wholesale execution. So we say that the query is wholesale when the execution of the query is completely sent to the remote server and the local server doesn't have any, anything uh, special to do. Uh, all sale query in order to create a calculated column, that calculated column needs to be all sale. As I said, it's a limitation. It's an important limitation you need to take into account, but uh, you can overcome it. Because uh, what I can do is uh, I can simply take my brand categories table. I cannot create a calculated column, but I, uh, which is still here. So let me delete it because it's never going to work. But I can build a relationship between product and brand categories based on the brand. And you see that uh, I have the option of creating a relationship between product, which is in the remote server, and brand categories, which is on the local server. So I have a table in my local engine. I have a table on the remote engine. And I do have the option of building a relationship between the two tables. If I click on OK. The relationship is created. And if I want to slice, uh, not by this product category, but by the brand category, which is here, I can take the brand category, drop it here uh, at the beginning. And I have a sales amount, margin percentage, and total cost for non top sellers and for top sellers. Again, it's important to understand what is happening because I have created a relationship. So the interesting question is, uh, which engine is running this query? Is it the remote server? Is it the local server? Is there any sort of communication between the two? Because we are computing the sales amount. The sales amount requires us to scan the sales table, which is on the remote server. But I'm grouping by the brand category, which is on the local server. 
So how is it possible that the remote server is able to group by a column that does not exist on the remote server itself? In order for this to happen, there are two possibilities. Either data is uh, transferred from the remote server to the local server, but as you might guess, that would require transferring the sales table that is potentially extremely large. Or, and that is the way Power BI chooses, some of the local data is sent to the remote server in order for the remote server to perform the grouping by, by columns that do not exist on the remote server itself. If uh, you are like me and you are curious to understand what is actually happening, well, we can just uh, clear everything, refresh the visual, and grab the query that is being executed. We copy it on the clipboard, and then with DAX Studio that I lost in the meantime. Where are you, DAX Studio? Here it is. We paste the code, both the DAX and the Direct Query Query. Here we are. I have uh, the DAX query. Remember, this is the query executed by the local engine that references brand categories, brand categories, brand category, the column, the table, brand categories, that is local. This query generates another query that is sent to the remote engine. And if we look at this query, uh, probably we need to format it. No way, it doesn't format. Uh, if you look at this query, we have uh, a variable that contains uh, several uh, value and value zero, but we have this variable that is the most important one that contains three Contoso, three white word importers, three adventure works, three the phone company. Three and four are the two identifiers to integers values that identify non-top seller and top seller. And this variable contains uh, the relationship between uh, the brand and uh, the category. And then this group cross apply table with non filter with group cross apply. These are all new DAX functions that have been introduced specifically for composite model that let the engine perform the grouping not by model columns, but by columns that are somewhat defined in variables. So this is uh, the way that you communicate in order for the remote engine to perform the grouping by the local engine sends information to the remote engine uh, in order to transform the, the information needed for the remote engine to perform the grouping by. In, uh, from the point of view of the user, the implementation is straightforward. They don't have to think about a lot of details. They simply create relationships between tables. They create measures. They create calculated columns. And everything works just nicely. However, uh, the real implementation is much more intricate. It's much more complex than that. And this, of course, trans creates limitations in the way you create your model. Because think about that. The brand categories table contains a bunch of rows. Like, uh, where is my brand categories? Uh, there are probably 10, 15 rows. So the size of the variable that needs to be sent to the remote engine is rather small. There are no issues here. But if for whatever reason, the size of the table that need to be transferred between the two servers is larger, this might be a serious issue from the performance point of view or from the modeling point of view. Therefore, you need to use a composite model. So the way they were uh, created, the way they were intended for. Uh, composite models have never been created as a way of extending in a an uncontrolled way data models. So if you ever dreamed about creating your corporate model and then below the corporate model start to build layers of composite models. So you have a first model, then you add a bunch of tables and you create a second model that is an extension of the first one. And then you create the third layer, which is an extension of the second. And you go this way by creating layers of composite model that is never going to work because the amount of data that needs to be transferred every time a query is executed will soon uh, lead to very serious performance issues. Composite models have been created 
for you to, to connect to a remote model that contains your corporate data and extend it with a small set of data. So small local tables that let you perform an analysis that was not present in the remote model. Now, I need to start uh, running some demos because I think they will be helpful in understanding what are the, the problems that you might uh, encounter, what I call, always call the duck shenanigans. Uh, scenarios where you think you're, you're doing it right uh, and for whatever reason, not understanding the details of the implementation leads to a failure in the implementation. So let me show you a couple of examples. The first one is uh, static segmentation. So this is a regular import model. And uh, my import model contains uh, a configuration table that says uh, low sales, medium sales, and high sales. Depending on the value of uh, the sales, I want to slice uh, the product. So I created a table, product segment. Let me show you it here. Oops, okay. That depending on uh, the value of uh, sales uh, of um, uh, the product, if a product sold between zero and 1,000, we consider low. Between 1,000 and 10,000, it's medium. Between 10,000 and uh, whatever number, a very large number, it's uh, high sales. So in order to build this model, what I did, I created a calculated column in the product table. segment, here is it, that contains the segment to which each product belongs. And the code of segment says, well, I compute the sales amount, then I scan the segment table searching for the row in the segment table where the minimum and maximum value are in between the sales of the current product. And then if there is only one row, I retrieve the product segment and I store it in the calculated table. This let me assign to each product the segment to which it belongs. And it works just nicely. I can make it work and I can slice by segment and look at the sales amount. And if I'm interested in the individual products, I just take the product name, add it to my report, not on the columns, but on the rows. So I can actually inspect which product are, for example, low sales. And that tells me exactly product by product, which products are in the low sales segment and without their sales. This model works just nice. And I might say, well, I actually have my entire corporate model. And the only table that I need to add to the entire structure in order to make this model work is the product segment table. This looks like the perfect scenario for a composite model. I might want to do segmentation of my product based on the sales amount. And I do that by connecting with a remote composite model. I copy the product segment table, and then I build a calculated column there. So I can try to do the same. I can take the product segment table. I just copy the code of a product segment. Control C. Then I go in my Power BI file. Where is it? Here it is. And I create a new table. So I go to modeling, new table. And I have my product segment table, which is there. It works. I'm happy. I have my configuration table. Keep in mind, this table is local. That is stored in the local VertiPack model. Then I go in the other model. I have my calculated column in product. I can take uh, the code of segment, copy it, go in uh, my remote product table, build a new column, which I can do, paste it. And unfortunately, as you are going to see, I have my error that says, uh, well, it would be lovely, but the common product segment cannot be pushed to the remote data source. Let's look at, at the code and understand the reason why this cannot happen. This part of the code is just computing the sales amount, and this can be pushed to the remote server. But then in the next part, 
I'm referencing the product segment table. And because I'm referencing the product segment table, as a result, I cannot push this code to the remote server. That's a limitation. And looks like a very strong limitation because I can actually paste, I can actually execute this part of the code on the remote server, but I cannot execute everything else. So that looks like a, uh, a game stop. I cannot go farther. But luckily, uh, with a bit of data modeling, uh, we can actually overcome this limitation. But in order to overcome it, we need to think at a possible solution. And here, what we need to do is to split the execution of uh, the part that can be computed uh, remotely and use a calculated column for that. And then find a way to build the same model that provides the same level of segmentation without mixing local and remote queries. So actually, what I can do is instead of creating the segment this way, let me copy this code because we will need it later. I just delete it. What I can do is create a new column. Let's call it uh, sales, uh, uh, no, product sales. We just compute uh, the sales amount. The part of the code that computes the sales amount, this can be pushed to the remote server. So now I have a new column, product sales. For, I cannot see the content of product sales, but I know the column contains the sales of the given product. Then I want to use this column to build a relationship between the product segment table and the sales of the product. The problem is, uh, if I look at the table as it is now, I cannot build a relationship between the sales of a given product and uh, the given segment because uh, the segment is neither the value that will uh, be stored in the product table is any value between zero and 10,000. I will have a lot of different values uh, and I will never have zero or a thousand. But what I can do is extend the table that contains the segment, adding one row for each of the possible values of the product, uh, product sales. So let me write the query with Dax Studio because that is much easier. And then we paste it in the model. This is the code that computes the segment. I can evaluate. Uh, let me start from, I can just evaluate values of uh, product. Where is product sales? If I run it, this query is going to be executed by the remote server that is retrieving all the values of the product sales. Keep in mind, I probably going long for that, but what is happening is that I'm executing a query on my engine and I'm retrieving the values of a column that does not exist in the remote engine. I'm asking the remote engine to compute the column on the fly and return all the values. And then I can use generate over this. And for each of the rows, I filter product segments. And instead of using, well, I can actually do a variable var product sales equal this product product sales. Then I retrieve the segment, I retrieve the result, and I return the result embedded in a table. I could probably have used that columns, but generate should work in a similar way. Now it says if your product has this amount, then the category is low sales. This query mixes uh, local and remote uh, parts, but it's a calculated table. It's not a calculated column. And as a calculated table, I can build this table and store it in my model. So I can now go to my model, create a new table that I call a product segments expanded. That contains the result of this generate. Now I created a local table that contains the value of the product sales and the 
category to which it belongs. Let me sort the sending. So we see if we have high sales, medium sales, and different, um, different types. And finally, what I can do is I can create a relationship between my product segments expanded and the product table. Product sales goes to product sales. Oh, I have a circular dependency. Why? Oh, because of the way I created the calculated column product sales. Okay, that should be calculate sales amount. All except product. Product key. That is in order to avoid the circular dependency that otherwise would be created. That's a bit too long to explain the details, but uh, if you are ever curious about that, give it a try and you can learn more. If nobody asks, I'm not going to explain it further. Now I should be able to create the relationship. Not yet. So why not? Because I use values uh, that should be this thing or or no blank row that gets rid of the blank row dependency. Now cross your fingers and now I can create the relationship. And I need to choose the direction. I want the product segments to filter product. And now that I did all this work, I can get rid of the brand category and replace it with the product segment expanded. Well, the column is named value, which is probably not the best, but I'm slicing by high sales, low sales, and medium sales, sales amount, the margin percentage, and the total cost. So uh, there is a limitation. The limitation is that you can create calculated columns in the remote engine only if their execution is all sale. You have the option of uh, um, building relationship and creating those calculated columns. If uh, the execution is not all sale, then you need to find a different way of uh, um, refactoring the same code in a way that is working with composite models. So you need to understand how they work in order to be able to write code that uh, works nicely. If you ever dreamed about people starting to ex extend their model without having a proper knowledge of DAX, uh, I'll stop dreaming because that is not going to happen in the short term. Uh, people need to understand uh, how the feature works uh, in order to build code uh, that works uh, the proper way. I, I, well, I don't, but I'm going to steal some time from Q and A. So if you have questions, start asking because otherwise I'm going on with the demo. Because I want to show you another example that is a variation of uh, the static segmentation. It's a Maybe it's simpler in some way, but it hides again some complexity that is uh, important to um, understand. Oops. Oops, again, here we are. Um, this is dynamic segmentation. I still want to do segmentation, but this time I want to do that by the minimum and maximum value of sales, and I want to cluster the customers. So if a customer buys between zero and 1,000, then it is in the low sales cluster. If it buys between 1,000 and 10,000, it's in medium sales. If it, more than 10,000, that goes to high sales. So the thing that I want to do this time is that I want the segmentation to be dynamic. So when I slice, like in this case by year, the measure that is reported here is counting the number of customers that in 2017 were in low sales. 2018 were low sales, 2019, again, low sales. The thing is, the same customer might be in different clusters depending on the year. So this time I cannot rely on a relationship. I need to write DAX code that checks 
customer by customer, it saves amount in the given filter context and then finds out whether the customer belongs or not to a specific, um, a specific cluster. This is a pattern that you can download from DAXPattern.com. It's very simple. And uh, if we look at the measure that is shown here, it's a customer in segment. What does customer in segment do? Well, customer in segment uh, scans uh, the uh, sales segment table. It computes, it checks for the minimum and maximum values, and then it filters uh, out of the entire customer table the customer whose sales amount happens to be in between the minimum and maximum value. After customer in segment has been computed, then we just count how many customers are there, and finally we produce the result. This is not a calculated column. So even though it is true that we are mixing calculations that are in the remote model and in the local model in the same query, this is going to work just nicely. But so far, this is the solution in VertiPack. I might want to perform exactly the same calculation on the remote model. We have the sales segment table. If I'm lucky, the table is still sales segment. No, that was product segment. So we need to build the new table. Let me copy this table. Then, okay, we go here and we create a new table. Sorry, I'm doing that on the wrong model. Let's go to this one. This is the composite model where I have my temporary table, I have the product table, and we can create from here a new table. Sales segment. Again, remember, this table is local. It's not on the remote server. And once I have the table, I can just go here, get rid of sales amount, margin percentage, total cost, and I can just slice by the sales segment segment. Let's place it here. I remove this one. So I'm slicing by high, low sales and medium sales. If I place margin, it will show always the same value because the table is not related in any way to the current model. But all what I need to do is take from this model the customer in segment measure, copy it, and then create the measure here. I have my measure. It works. Remember, now I'm mixing local models with remote data. So sales segment is in the local engine. Customer is in the remote engine. But this is a measure. This is no longer a calculated column. So I'm free to mix in the same piece of code part of the execution that happens all sales and part that happens retail. And I can place customer in segment here. And that shows a number. And uh, in order to replicate the same report that I had, I can take the year, I'll transform that into a matrix. Uh, I didn't want the quarter, I wanted the year on the column. So you see, it's not very, very fast, but it works. High sales, low sales, medium sales, and I have the same number that I had in, um, in the previous report. So this is the number of customers that are high, low, medium, depending on the different years. But the question is, how is it working? Is it faster? I don't know. Let's clear, let's refresh the visual just to get a feeling of how long it's going to take. But I don't know why it's not working. That's I don't know. Performance analyzer stopped working. So let me start again. Optimize performance analyzer. Start recording. Refresh the visual. Now it's working. And you see that the matrix takes. Uh, 
2.4 seconds to execute. 2.4 seconds is the time spent in that query. Let me copy the query. Then we go in Duck Studio. If only I find it. And now it's time to explain you why we added these multiple query types detected. Because uh, the DAX query can be short, but the direct query query might be much, much longer than expected. It's in total 1,500 rows. Now, the DAX query is quite, kind of simple. It's a grouping by sales segments and by year, and it's computing sales customer in segment. Now look at the direct query query and think a bit about the code that needs to be executed. This is the code that needs to be executed that requires a sales segment and customer. So there are two possibilities. Either the content of sales segment is sent to the remote engine or the content of the customer table is moved back to the local engine. Depending on how complex your code is, the engine needs to make a choice. And sometimes the choice is kind of heavy. If you look at the variable that contains the data that is communicated between the two engines, you see that we have this gigantic table that happens to contain the entire customer table. Chad Walker, James Carpenter, Clarence Devo, all these are thousands and thousands of lines of DAX code that basically define the customer table. So the customer table had to be moved from the remote server to the local engine, and the local engine then used it to generate a query that contains the association between the customer part of information and the data that is needed for the cross apply table to perform the grouping. Now you can easily picture that with a few thousand customers as we have in the demo database that this query is still uh, possible to execute. But if the query was larger, that would be a serious problem. Whenever you write code that needs to be executed in, in um, composite model, you need to pay attention to small details. For example, look at this variable customer in segment that is counting the customers whose sales amount happens to be in between the two, the two boundaries. Why on earth are we using the customer table? We don't need the customer table. There's no reason to count the customer table. It would be more than enough if we counted the customer keys. So if we use values of sales customer key rather than customer, well, the measure does not change. Performance-wise, it's a bit slower, but actually, if we refresh it, I expect it to be faster, yes. It moved from 2.4 seconds that I needed before to less than, half, less than a second. So it's a bit faster, but it's more interesting if we look at the content of the query, and then we go again in DAX Studio, we paste it, both DAX and data query. We have uh, the definition, the query, the local query executed by the local engine, and then we have the other query. But if you look at the other query, you see that the content of the data that needs to be moved between the two engine is much, much reduced. So the size of the query is uh, smaller. Before we had 1500 rows, now we have 300 rows. That is one fifth of the original query that was executed. And in order to do that, you only need to pay attention to reduce the number of columns that are used in the query. The smaller the number of columns, the better your model will be. And I have two minutes left of my schedule, so I need to cut it. But actually, I have been able to present all what I wanted. Because uh, what I wanted to pass as a message is that composite models are great. They are a beautiful feature, extremely powerful. But at the same time, they also hide a lot of complexity. They are not the holy grail. They are a tool that needs to be used with a grain of salt. So you need to understand the feature, you need to understand the communication between the two engines, and then write DAX code and data models that take advantage of the feature without overloading it. And that's it. 
I don't have anything more to say about that, even because, as I said, I ate all of my time just talking.